everyone. This video is a short review of the TI Inspire CX2 CAS, a Texas Instruments flagship graphing calculator. And the CX2 is relatively similar in capability to the other uh, flagship devices, the HP Prime and the ClassPad CAS. Uh, in terms of basic calculation, uh, graphing, programming and CAS features, and in that regards, all three are excellent. So I'm not going to go into uh, that detail too much here. But what I will focus on is the overall user experience of the CX2. Uh, and in particular, it's hardware, the screen, keyboard, buttons, and touchpads. And also its graphical user interface. Because the CX2 is primarily a document-centric device. Whereas other graphing calculators tend to be app-centric. As we'll see, the CX2's document model is very powerful, uh, but it comes with some trade-offs. So we'll start with the hardware side, and the CX2 is a large calculator, uh, slightly taller and wider than, say, uh, this HP Prime. And like the Prime, the CX2 has a 320 by 240 pixel screen, uh, but it's not quite as big as you might expect. Uh, there are some quite large bezels. Uh, and unlike the Prime or the Casio ClassPad, uh, the CX2 has no touchscreen ability. Uh, but below the screen is a touchpad control uh, that can also be pressed to act as four cursor keys uh, plus a click button. Uh, so say uh, we hit the on button uh, to go to the home screen. And now we can glide our finger uh, on the touchpad and a cursor arrow appears uh, and tracks uh, the position of our finger and the movement. Uh, and the user manual states that this works just like a trackpad on a laptop, uh, but the cursor doesn't really track your finger very smoothly. Uh, so even with the slow rate of uh, movement, uh, it's actually quite tricky to position the cursor on uh, one of these options correctly. Uh, and then if you want to move over to the other side of the screen, uh, you have to uh, lift up your finger uh, because the touch pa uh, pad is quite small. And yes, you can change the speed of the cursor movement, uh, but then it makes it harder to point where you want. So I find I don't use the touch pad very much. I tend to use uh, the cursor keys uh, and keyboard shortcuts uh, to navigate, but uh, that distracting cursor uh, arrow always pops up and vanishes. And I probably prefer to turn the touchpad off, uh, but as far as I know, it's not possible. So the TI Inspire calculators have always had an unorthodox uh, keyboard layout, uh, and the CX2 uh, is quite similar to uh, the old black and white uh, Inspire CAS. So there's a top set of navigation keys uh, and then there's the main keyboard uh, in uh, grey with digits. Uh, and these keys are okay, uh, but they do have quite a bit of wobble to them. Uh, and then there are these small rocker style keys on the left and right of the main keypad. Uh, and to me these feel very cramped. Um, so, for example, especially keys like uh, multiplication and division that you're hitting all the time. Uh, also the enter key, uh, which obviously you also access very fre frequently, is the same size as the rocker star buttons above, uh, so it's not always easy to find. Uh, and then there's this character keyboard below, uh, and these buttons are really small and packed in. Uh, and it's kind of an unusual feeling to type because your fingers are never just resting on a single key. Uh, so say if I put my finger on the I key, uh, my fingernail is touching the B key and also uh, my finger is also touching the other keys around. Uh, it just doesn't feel right. Uh, and also using a pen uh, to type also doesn't really work uh, since the buttons are convex uh, so it just tends to slide off. Unfortunately, the letters are organized in alphabetical order uh, rather than being a query layout, and uh, I presume this is because many exams in the US uh, prohibit devices with QWERTY keyboards. 
And uh, now, from a hardware design point of view, no doubt you get used to some of these things, uh, but it's not the standard you'd expect for such a, an expensive device. And maybe Texas Instruments will fix some of these issues in the next generation Inspire calculator. Maybe the most interesting thing to me about the X2 is its document centricity. Documents have quite a long history in the history of calculators, and they really came out of the desire to supply students with lesson materials and exercises that could be viewed and completed on their calculator. Uh, so, for example, the HP uh, 38G uh, in 1995 uh, supported applets, uh, which a te teacher could send to students and receive responses uh, via infrared. Uh, and on the 38G, an applet uh, can consist of uh, multiple views. Uh, so, for example, uh, grids, uh, numeric, symbolic, uh, plots, uh, as well as notes and sketches. Uh, and then in the late 90s, uh, PDAs, like the Palm Pilot, uh, became popular. And all of the major calculator manufacturers experimented with stylus-based devices. Uh, and the first one on the market uh, was the Sharp. Uh, EL9650 in 2002 and this had a uh, slideshow uh, capability uh, and it uh, allowed uh, teachers to walk through pre-programmed lessons uh, and formula on the calculator. Uh, a year later the stylus based Casio class, class Pad 300 was released with a feature called e-activities that were documents that could include embedded slices of apps. This concept exists to this day in modern uh, Casio graphing calculators. Also around the same time HP experimented uh, with a stylus based device called the HP Expander which had the concept of workbooks. Uh, but the Expander never reached the market. And the original TI Inspire came a little bit later in 2007 uh, but was built around similar ideas of supporting classroom study and sharing of documents between teachers and students. And the Sex2 has a very advanced document feature, and so I've downloaded an example document from the Texas Instruments site, and it's a lesson about the fundamental theorem of calculus, uh, which links the concept of differentiating a function with the concept of integrating a function. And so to open it, uh, I can go to Browse, uh, and I'll select the document. Uh, and so the document opens on the first page, which is an introductory note. Uh, and if we hit Control up, uh, we can see a, a summary of the structure of the whole document. Uh, and CX2 documents are made up of uh, problems. In, case, in this case, there are uh, three. And on each problem uh, is made up a series of pages. And so now we we'll, can return to page one. And uh, the number uh, 1.1 indicates this is the first page of the first problem. Uh, and we can hit control right uh, to go to the next page, another note, and then control right again. Uh, and now page 1.3 actually has two graphs on it. Uh, there can be up to four applications on a page. In this case, uh, the top graph uh, shows the velocity of a vehicle, uh, and uh, the bottom graph uh, shows the distance the vehicle has traveled since uh, two hours after it started. And so these graphs are interactive, uh, so we can grab uh, a point on the top graph and uh, drag it left and right. And so if we move on to the next page, uh, we can see this has uh, two question and answer boxes. Uh, so here the student could enter their answers and after they've worked all the way through the document, uh, they can save the document file, the file uh, menu, and they can also potentially send it 
back to the teacher. Documents can include uh, many types of built-in and custom interactive applications. And so that was an example of a document that might be prepared by a teacher. Uh, but you might be wondering, uh, how do you use the calculator normally? Well, the CX2 does have the concept of a scratch pad uh, for the calculator and graphing apps. And so we can jump into the calculator app. Uh, and it supports three modes, uh, numeric, exact, arithmetic, and CAS, and they all uh, support textbook style entry. So an example of a numeric formula uh, might be say, uh, we want to sum the squares of the numbers from 1 to 10. Uh, well, we can pick the sigma template. Uh, and then enter uh, x equals 1 to 10, and then x squared. And uh, the answer is 385. Uh, but sometimes you may be dealing with, say, irrational numbers such as pi or e. And a lot of calculators would need to round those values to of um, irrational numbers to give approximate answers. But with this x2, you can just type those in, and exact arithmetic will produce exact results. So a great example of this is if I type in the left side of Euler's identity, one of the greatest formula in mathematics uh, that relates e, i, pi, and 0, and 1. Uh, so we can begin by hitting the e to the x key, and we want to raise e uh, to the power of i times pi. Uh, and then we want to add 1. And the result is 0. So lastly, uh, CAS expressions are purely algebraic. So an example might be uh, expanding, say, an algebraic expression. Uh, so we can pick um, algebra functions from our menu. Let's say expand. Uh, and let's pick, say, x plus 2 uh, to the power of 12. Uh, and I really like how on the uh, Inspire um, CAS and uh, the numeric calculator are um, one and the same experience. Uh, that's one difference from the Prime, uh, which has two different apps. And so the calculator and graphing apps are available via the scratch pad. Uh, but if you want to use uh, any other application, you need to create a document and add that application to it. And so I've created an example that explores uh, the Collatz conjecture, uh, otherwise known as the 3x plus 1 problem, which is a really interesting unsolved problem in mathematics. And it's related to a very simple function that defines a series of numbers. So the way it works is that if the current number is even, then the next number in the series is just that number divided by 2. But if the number is odd, uh, the next number in the series is 3 times the number uh, plus 1. Uh, so for example, uh, if you start with n equals 12, uh, the next number in the series is 6 because 12 is even, uh, and then 3. Uh, but 3 is odd, uh, so you need to multiply it by 3 and add 1 to get 10, uh, and so on. And the conjecture states that uh, you can start with any positive integer, and the series will always terminate at 1. And so I've created a document uh, exploring this that I will load now. And on the first page, uh, it has a uh, calculator and a TI basic function in it. And the basic function uh, just takes a number n and returns the number of steps that uh, the series takes to get to 1. Uh, and documents define a scope for sharing variables and functions. And so we can call the basic function C uh, from the calculator app, for example. Uh, so for example, uh, if we call C uh, with 1, 
the answer is uh, zero steps. Uh, but if we say call C uh, with 12, uh, the answer is uh, nine steps. And uh, on the next page, I've added a spreadsheet. Uh, and this works a lot like, say, Excel. Uh, so in the first column, I've got uh, in uh, my, my series of numbers from 1 to 10. Uh, and then the second column uh, is set up uh, to call uh, the function C uh, using the value of the cell to the left. Uh, so at the top of the spreadsheet, I've linked uh, the two rows of data uh, to two variables within the document, so n and steps. Uh, and again, uh, these can be accessed from any app. So uh, say I can go back to the spreadsheet and uh, type in uh, steps. Uh, and I can see a list of those values. Then finally, uh, I've added a data graph view uh, and set the x-axis and uh, the y-axis uh, to those uh, two uh, variable values. And so you can see the way that functions and variables uh, can be linked within CX2 documents is quite powerful. But having to always create a document uh, to use these apps uh, does add a bit of friction to the whole experience. So the CX2 is a really powerful calculator. Its document-related functionality in particular is very mature, but at times the whole experience is let down a little by its hardware and product design, and it's hard not to compare it uh, to the hardware of the HP Prime, which has a similar capability but with an excellent touchscreen and keyboard. Uh, also, both of these devices now support the Python programming language, uh, which other, adds another dimension to their programmability uh, but I may say that for a separate video. It's worth also stating the CX2 uh, supports Endless, uh, which is effectively a system for jailbreaking the device and running natively compiled apps like games and so forth. Uh, so it does have a, an element of hackability uh, the Prime lacks. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. And if you have, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to get alerted of new videos.